comes, wherever goes, there is one thing that I know. You are faithful. You are faithful. Yes, he is. So I speak out to words.
We give you praise tonight, Lord. We give you glory tonight, Lord God. Hallelujah. Is he the one you live for? Is he the one you live for? Let's put our focus on him right now. We give you praise, Lord. We give you all the glory. We give you all the credit for everything good that's in our lives. Everything good that's in our lives is from you. Everything good. Too many things to count. Too many things. Too many things. Really. If you were to sit right now and think of every good thing that's in your life, it would outweigh the bad. I'm just saying, it would outweigh the bad. It would outweigh it. And we give you the credit for that, Lord. We give you the glory for that. Everything that is good in our lives, Lord God. We lift up your name and we thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord God, for all that you are and for all that you do. We give you thanks and praise. And everybody said amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Is he not a good God? Hallelujah. Glory to God. We'll welcome to night four of revival this week. Hallelujah. How many of you have been in every one of the uh, every one of the services this week? A lot of you. A lot of you have. How many of you, this is your first night you've been able to be here? Well, welcome. We're so glad you're here. Welcome. Before you're seated, turn and greet one another. You're surrounded by beautiful people. everybody. Welcome everyone, whether it's your first time or whether it's your 800th time to be here. We welcome you. And if it is your first time, we would love to know about it. In the seat pocket in front of you, there's a green card that says new here on it. If you're, if you're here for the first time, you're looking for a home church. If you're visiting from another church, we just welcome you. But if you're looking for a home church, we would love to meet you, um, get to know you, get, tell you a little bit more about the church. So after service, you could stop by the guest center, and we have a gift bag um, to give you just for being here with us tonight. A um, couple of things that are coming up this Saturday is our egg hunt. Woohoo! It's going to be warmer than they said because I'm calling for it in Jesus' name. But it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, from 12 to 2 is the event. If you're just bringing your family or inviting friends to come, that's the time for the event. The hunt itself starts at 1 p.m. But if you would like to help out, and really if you're a church member, please come and help out, even if only to just greet the community, meet people, welcome them, tell them how cute their kids are, you know, stuff like that. There's nothing cute cuter than an 18 month old with a little basket picking up little eggs. There's just nothing cuter. That one, one is all they want. They just pick it up and they play with it. So anyway, come on out. It's going to be a great time. Also for, um, we have mission school. It's coming up uh, tomorrow night and next Tuesday night. Um, if you, for some reason, miss the registration on that and you would like to come to mission school, we do require it for those going on a mission trip. Just go to the church center and register for it. And last but not least, during Easter week, I wanted to remind you that on Good Friday, we do have a noon service here in the sanctuary. If you're off work and you can come in for that service, it's at 12 noon. Amen. Pastor Merrick, come on up. She's turning me off. I've got something I want to share with you. Um, I remember we had the sister from Ukraine here, Sister um, Angela. And uh, she sent us a very nice video of thanks. And I just uh, respect her 
for those who don't know her, her husband's in Sumi, which is the far eastern city. I've been in Sumi, spent a better part of a, over a week there. And she at the time was about 20, and she was a phenomenal interpreter. How do you know you got a good interpreter? When you think you speak Ukrainian, <laughs> that's a good interpreter. She was that quick and that good. And you know, her husband had a dream and said, you must leave now. That was about mid-February. So she came with the three children. She's in Tampa. And we know about a, a week or so, a week, about a week and a half, two weeks after that, Russia invaded. And it's amazing we have many people out there. Uh, if I listen to a, different people, everyone has different opinions what's going on over there. The one I like the most, like with apostrophes and a question mark. I like the Spanish they put a question mark upside down at the beginning of the question. And a one writes it up at the end of the question. I feel like this is what it is. Question mark. You really believe that's all fake? It's just fake? People are actually saying that. No, it's not fake. It's very real. When I deal with Bill Wilson, he was there for 10 days. It's not fake. It's real. When I deal with um, Angela, and she's all over the place, think about this. Every day for eight hours a day, She's on the phone dealing with churches all over Ukraine and in Russia, in Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, all the other stands. So she sent us a video. And I thought I'd just show it you. Let's go ahead. Hello, Pastor Merrick and the church. Just wanted to personally say thank you. Thank everyone who donated toward UA Connect toward Ukraine, toward the families, and just see how thankful people are. We keep receiving the the testimonies and, and just gratitude of the people. And I want to share one specific story with you because this is a story that, I mean, just touches my heart. So it's about Lilia, who lived in Kharkov. Kharkov is on the very Russian border next to my city, Sumy. And she's been bedridden for over 14 years. She's been in very tough physical conditions, needing very special help. Every three day, nurse would come and help her. When the war started, it started in Kharkov, and it was the hardest in Kharkov. Be, uh, because of the bombing, her apartment was an apartment building, and she lost all the windows, and it was in the middle of still the um, winter. So uh, her elder brother, who was taking care of her, you know, was quite complicated and our team was helping them to find volunteers and find help but it was so dangerous the only way for her to be rescued uh, uh, and go to her daughter her daughter is in germany uh, she needed 45 4500 uh, us dollars for the transportation because it was very special transportation ambulances special trains uh, assistance and so on they didn't have the money they were able to find uh, raise 1000 and with help of ua connect they were actually able to get safety safely to the place and she just cried 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 and she said please say thank you to everyone who helped me do this it would be totally impossible without the love and support of every one of you. So I just want to share this story. And there are so many, uh, many others. If you go to the website, go to the Facebook or Instagram page, you'll see all these stories. People are saying thank you. Some of them say we never had any type of help um, in the rest, like in our lives. So, so they're so grateful. Thank you guys. And I just want to say I am grateful. And the time that I had with your church was uh, very special for me. Very restoring very loving you know that's the way i felt i felt special i felt love and holy spirit ministered to me thank you i love you god bless you and see you soon all right angela you know wonderful wow it was one of the most powerful wednesday nights how many here wednesday night it was so powerful and so we sent her five thousand dollars from this congregation praise the lord but you know um as you see what's going on in Ukraine, you really see the hand, how evil Satan can become. The same spirit that ran Mao Zedong, Stalin, Hitler, it's the same spirit in Putin. What kind of spirit? It's a spirit from hell, because it has no mercy. 
None. Zero. And so we need to be able to stand here as a church. And uh, I personally, as a pastor, am praying for the churches in Ukraine. So many of them I know personally. So but it, it hits close to home. Amen? So if you ever wonder why we preach the gospel, the gospel is the only power that can undo that form of wickedness because it's the truth. If you take the restraints of morality of society, you get a Ukraine from Russia. Human beings are capable of that because Satan is real. He'll invade you, he'll take you over, and he'll do what he wants, which is complete destruction, annihilation, zero mercy. So we recognize we live in the last days. So the most important thing you can ever focus on is getting this gospel out. It's the preaching of the gospel is the hammer that smashes the chains of hell. You got that? Amen. And what the devil is, af is afraid of is a spirit-filled believer who's consumed with passion for what nothing but Jesus and the cause that he put us on this planet, which is to bring this gospel to the four corners of the earth. That is the plan of God. He is afraid of believers that capture that same vision. He will do everything to dilute your fire, to get you sidetracked of what's important, get caught up with careers, job, even your own kids can become your God. But that's why we have revival. We have revival not to be religious because we have revival to shake us, fill us, wake us, and send us. Amen. And we just sent another team off this afternoon. Took off to South Africa. Amen. Yeah, put your, put your hands together. We just had another team. I, came, I just heard the team just came back from South Africa. Andre uh, Van Roy and his wonderful wife, Renee. They were there with the team. I mean, just tremendous. I mean. Marcus. Never the same. Marcus preached. Yeah, focus on Marcus. Marcus, Marcus preached. <laughs> he preached. <laughs> he had 80 people come to Christ. He, he preached to them. He had 80 people, young people, come to Christ. And then Matthew, 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 Matthew. For those who don't know it, Matthew is a professional swing dancer. I mean, he can, I mean, he does the moves. And so he took his moves to South Africa and mesmerized the youth population. They were totally spellbound. They were eating right out of his hand. He told both, both these two gentlemen, and there are others that said, you know what? We're finding our calling. We're finding when you step into what's about. And so, hence we, uh, in this church, you can understand from my vantage point, I, we have no time for religion. Hurt feelings. I'm, I'm, I'm hurt. You hurt me. How can we deal with that when their baby's dying in Ukraine? How can you deal with that where people are being blown up for their faith? I mean, how can you, my God, you hurt me. The AC isn't quite right. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But that's why we're here. We're here to grow up leaders. That's why this church is about growing up leaders to go. And as soon as my job is done, you all go, I'm going too. We have the sign of the door. Mission accomplished. Everyone came. They're supposed to come. They're all sent. Find another dead church, but it's not ours. We're too alive. We just left. No, it's the truth. So we're going to receive our tithes and offerings right now. But know where it goes to. It goes to get this gospel out. It's all about getting the gospel out. And if ever, when I see this thing going on in Ukraine... It puts steel in me that we're going to fast more, pray more, seek God. We're going to have whole uh, nights just praying for that place. 
God will do a divine reverse of what's going on. Amen? Then you have to ask yourself the question, how long will the conscience of the West allow this tragedy to occur at our footsteps when we have the power to stop it? So I'm going to send you some things. You can write your congressmen, senators. And we're going to go to prayer. Amen? Father, I thank you today that you are a good God. You've been so good to us. Thank you, Lord. You've given us a great, great commission to go into all the world. To bring this knowledge of Jesus Christ, the one that can break the chains of sin, hell, and death. And we, Lord, we just want to be more committed, more sought out, more given over totally to the cause of Christ than ever before. That's our heart's desire. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. 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 We're going to receive today's tithes and offerings right now. And let's just come forward or use your phone. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We praise God. You better make a longer rift on Wednesdays. About two more minutes longer, okay? Make note of that. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. We have a great man of God, Daniel DeToy. He's been up here three nights now. And we've had some great testimonies. People being, you got a testimony. Unplug that thing. This is John Tiferius. Man, when I say unplug that thing, it's like the astronaut getting off the space capsule. Stay right there. Here, reach your hand out with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just release our faith. For every offering, every tithe that's given will be multiplied supernaturally in these last days. To propagate the gospel in Jesus' name. If I said amen, amen. We love Jonathan and his wife Vicky is somewhere. Come up here, Vicky. Let's make it a twosome. Well, that might take some time. Help her, Jesus. Help her. Help her go slow. She's nearly got the baby's nearly coming out. And this wonderful couple. What happened to you? Well, Pastor, I I was being attacked in my body again. I started uh, working with Brother uh, Fernando Aguero, and um, as you guys know, he's he's a, a minister, and and, and uh, he's what he does is also uh, helping found the gospel around the world. And when you join something like that, the enemy, of course, is going to jump in and say, "Ha, ah, really? And then um, I started suffering attacks in my body, and, and it was a nonstop thing. And then um, last week before we started the revival, Pastor Willie prayed for me. Things started to get better. Wednesday, uh, Wednesday uh, to Thursday was just a night and day difference, but still there. Um, it went away. He, came, he tried to come come back again. Uh, that was on a Friday, and then um, I started. We started the, the meetings. That Sunday night, 
I think it was Sunday night, it was Monday, I'm not sure. Pastor, uh, Brother John Lawrence <laughs> caught me on the, <laughs> it was also an appointed thing. He caught me on the on the hallway and uh, we, we prayed together. He prayed for me and I immediately felt a difference. Uh, it was not 100% until um, my brother, <laughs> Daniel, uh, prayed for me. And as of today, I can say it's 100% gone. And I've been having... <laughs> The best, the best feeling when you feel the power of God, and I can say it's not the first time I've, I've, I've experienced in my body many times the power of God, and I will never get tired of that experience where your yesterday had a situation that was just torturing you, and then the next day is completely gone. <laughs> I love it, I love it, I love it. Vicky? I just wanted to say it was great. Well, actually, as I was actually, I've been congested for the last two weeks. And of course, as you many know, that you cannot really take anything. And I got healed too. Yes. Your nasal passages cleared up? It opened up. I mean, it was, it was two, two nights ago. I was sitting there praising and, and God healed me. <laughs> Come on, man. Let's give the Lord a praise. We're so excited for you. We rejoice with you, Vicky. When is this baby due? May 8th. You know that it'll be an anointed child. I, I don't know. I'm losing count of the babies. I am losing count. This is so wonderful. We have to extend the, the nursery. Let's give them a hand as they go. We love you both. We love you both. So we will introduce to you a man of God that has great vision. We, if you saw the video last night, the plan is 300,000 people in 45, 45 days from now in the nation of Zambia. If you'd like to go, just see Navita or myself. We will help you get there. Not, not, that, that doesn't mean we're paying. We just, <laughs> we just give you what you need to do. Got to clarify these things. And then you can go. Amen. And we've got several people going. We've got Sarah going. Aren't you, Sarah? Stamp Sarah. This is Sarah Wow. She's going in Jesus' name. Give her a hand. She's on her way. Marcus, are you going? He's going. His wife's going. Yes, in Jesus' name. If we have to receive offerings, they're going. In Jesus' name, no. But anyway, we want to introduce you a man of God, we've got their dear friends. Last night was phenomenal. I got, if you were here last night, Pastor Willie, you and I got hit at the same time. It took me quite a while to recover in a good way. But it's wonderful. God, when God touches you, he does things in you and for you. So we're highly respected of the anointing of God. And Brother Daniel, we will miss you. I have to give you, I, I was going to prepare it, but my, uh, my assistant is away today. But I'm going to mail you something. The official certificate that says you're an honorary member of World Harvest Church. We're going to send it to you. Amen. So come on up. Come on. Put your hands together for Daniel DeToy. Hallelujah. Love you. Love you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Come on. Give the Lord praise. Huh. Lift your hands to the Lord. Father, we love you. We worship you, Jesus. Father, we are thirsty. We are hungry, Lord. And Father, I thank you for every person here tonight, Lord. Thank you for blessing. Thank you for healing, miracles, deliverance, Lord. And Father, I thank you from tonight. We are going to a new level of glory, Lord. That our friends, our family, they won't recognize us after tonight, Lord. Holy Spirit, we give the meeting to you. Anoint my lips, Lord. And Lord, we yield this meeting to you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. 
Time really flies when you're having fun. It's sad that it's the final night, but you know, the Lord leaves the best wine for last. <laughs> and you know, you know, the word says that these people were not drunk as you suppose. You know, not drunk with just some old wine in, in pubs, but drunk with the new wine. And we saw that a bit over the last few days. We've seen the Lord do amazing, mighty things. And I just know it's the beginning. And um, it's, just, it's just amazing. I wish we could continue. Amen? But uh, the, Lord, the Lord has plans. And it's amazing to see what He's doing. And really, even myself, as I'm saying, that people ask me, am I tired? No, I'm not tired. I feel so refreshed. Amen? And um, praise the Lord. I have my wife with me. Uh, I know every time I've come, I've come without her. So I know last time I made a vow that I would bring her with. So she's here with me, my beautiful wife, Bia. That I deeply love. She's full time with me in the ministry now. She serves alongside of me. And... It really is the greatest privilege to have someone with the same passions, the same fire, the same love for Christ and for people. It, it makes my job a lot easier. So um, I want her to come share a bit, share what's on her heart. And she's a powerful preacher, a powerful woman of God. And um, yeah, I love her so much. <laughs> share as long as you want. If you want, you can make the outer call. <laughs> now I'll be fast. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. <laughs> uh, like Daniel said, we've been having so much fun. It's such a blessing and honor to be here at your lovely church. Thank you, Pastor Merrick, Pastor Lina, for having us. I'm so sad that we have to go tomorrow. And I'm looking forward to coming back very fast again. <laughs> Let me just share a scripture. I like to always share a scripture when Daniel gives me the mic, because there's power in the word of God. <laughs> and tonight, Daniel, Daniel said to me, he might ask me to share something, and I asked the Lord, well, what does he want me to say tonight? And I really felt that he wants to, again, encourage. Last night, I was encouraging also. <laughs> But as believers, we should be the greatest encouragers, right? After people spend time with us, they should walk away feeling encouraged and refreshed and ready to go hike up a mountain. <laughs> so in Psalm 25 verse 10, it says, All the paths of the Lord are steadfast, love, and faithfulness for those who keep His covenant and his testimonies. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast, love, and faithfulness. And tonight the Lord wants to remind you of his faithfulness. So every single time when you are facing something in your life, again, we've been, last night I also mentioned it, Daniel was saying on the second night about things that you feel that's there that you want to be broken off. Whenever those attacks come, thoughts of doubt, whatever it may be, you need to remind yourself of God's faithfulness. He will never not be faithful. Pastor Merrick said, this is his word, nothing else. Every single thing that is written here, it carries weight, it carries power. The Lord will never lie. And his word says that he is faithful. So I want to encourage you to do it. Whatever the Lord is telling you to do, even while these revival meetings are happening, I am pretty sure the Lord's speaking to your heart, speaking to you about the ministry, about the call that He has on your life. Even if you're now in a secular job, there could be a call on your, on your life, yes, in the secular job, but there could also be a different call where the Lord wants you to get out and go full-time into, into ministry. And it, it seems pretty scary sometimes, especially if you're someone who's been... Uh, in the in the secular, if I can say, like secular world of working, 
And now the Lord wants you to take something else up. It can seem scary, but the Lord wants to tell you that he is faithful and he will not call you and not provide. So whatever you feel from the Lord, know that whenever fear comes, what I read last night, that is not from the Lord. But he is faithful, 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 faithful. Hallelujah. <laughs> you sure you don't want to carry on, love? Okay. Hallelujah. He is faithful, full of faith, <laughs> full of faith. And, um, you know, I've, I've been enjoying touching on different things each night, as you've noticed, for those that have been here. And, you know, more than ever, as I've, as I've been saying, is that we need to get such a revelation on Christ. Uh, I am, you, you probably can, you know, puzzle the sermons together, but it all fits the picture, and the picture is Him. And um, if we're going to see the glory come, we need to get a revelation of Him. If we want to live a life of righteousness, if we want to see more miracles, you know, Pastor Merrick was speaking just now about offense, that it's so easy. You know, offense is a spirit. And offense comes because we're not rooted and grounded on the word of God. We're not rooted and grounded on what Christ did for us once and for all. You see, Christ was never hurt by us. He hurt for us. There's a difference. You know, love never fails. I said it yesterday. Can you imagine on our hardest days, you know, Jesus, <laughs> he is faithful, full of faith, even when we are faithless. Days when we didn't know what, what is going on, when we didn't even yet know him. Personally, in my testimony, when I got saved, I didn't necessarily know what I believed. You know, what everything about the Christian walk. But the gospel is this, that still, even in my unbelief, he doesn't stop believing in us. And even when I didn't know what I believed in, he didn't stop believing in me. <laughs> so we need to get a revelation. And it doesn't stop, Daniel, stop speaking about people. Daniel, stop speaking about this, you know, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. But that is the message. You know, we have, we have an issue, you know, in our country. Those South Africans that know, our power supply is called ESCOM. Anyone know ESCOM? And we have something in South Africa called load shedding. And what load, you're laughing, you know what I'm talking about. Load shedding is this where, the, where our country switches off all electricity most of the time just a random time of the day. For two, three hours. And sometimes it's like three, four times a day. In our last crusade, <laughs> we had to make a plan with a genset very fast because no one told us about load shedding. And there's many, today there's many Christians that are, you know, are like load shedding. They're on and off. I'm just, I'm just saying. One day they feel great, all holy. Praise the Lord, share every Facebook post. Every Instagram post on this story. But then the next day they want to speak against every man of God and every woman of God. And the Bible says, if you have hate in your heart, you're a murderer. So there's many, sadly, there's many mass murderers in the church today. But the Lord is working on it. Amen. <laughs> Something wrong? Okay. No anymore. Oh, fluff? Okay. Fluff. Fluff. <laughs> Love. But we can't afford to have on and off days in Christ. Because this gospel is power. When this gospel is preached, it's not an off day. 
When we preach Jesus, you know, he's not like, you know, uh, you know, choose his, I take off, Daniel. So maybe preach something else because I'm not going to move that day. He's ever moving, amen. He is building his church. Whether we like it or not. He is moving in this world. He is moving in Ukraine. He is moving in Russia. He is moving in Europe. Africa. He has a plan with this world. And more than ever, we need to be people of power. Amen. Anyone remember the story I shared yesterday with the police officer? Where is the police officer? I can't even see over there. <laughs> over the balcony. There you are. You see, no matter what size you are, you can be tall, you can be small. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are. He has given us all authority. Amen. And when we walk by faith, when we grab hold of it by faith, when we speak the word of God, power is released. Felt that too, Justin. <laughs> we serve a Jesus that is alive, that is not in some grave hiding out. He is alive, He's out the grave, amen. amen. And our message, our life needs to prove that. When people walk into us, what do they experience? Load shedding or power. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I want us to go to what's so funny. Hosea 6, a famous revival chapter. Because everyone, we need to get ready for revival. We need to get revel ready for revival. I can't hear you. It's only you, brother. We need to get ready for revival. Yes. Desire. 2 verse 2 says, Now it will come to pass that in these last days the mountain of the house of the Lord will be firmly established as the highest of the mountains. No, but this and this Daniel's. No, that's there. But we're not called to preach what media is saying, amen. What's going on in the world, we're called to preach the word. You have it. Isaiah 6. Mm. Verse 1, 2, 3. I'm going to read in the Amplified. Come and let us return in repentance to the Lord. For he has torn us. But he will heal us. He has wounded us. But he will bandage us. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up. That we may live before him. So let us know and become personally acquainted with him. Let us press on to know him and to understand fully the greatness of the Lord. To honor and deeply cherish him. His appearing, is, his appearing 
is prepared as, as, as certain as the dawn. And he will come to us in salvation like the heavy rain. Like the spring rain watering the earth. After two days, he will revive us. And on the third day, he will raise us up. Amen. Because this is God's plan for the world where we live in. As I mentioned, I love to share the scripture verse Numbers 14 verse 21. As surely as I live, the Lord says, the whole earth shall be filled with my glory. And, you know, preachers, Christians, we walk by faith, amen. And more than ever, we need to be so careful with what we speak out. And what's, what's going on in the world right now. Because death and life is in the power of the tongue. You can choose to partner, agree with everything happening in the world. Or you can stand up and take the word and say, no matter what's happening right now, I know God has a plan for the Ukraine, I know he has a plan for Russia, I know he has a plan for President Putin, I know he has a plan for South Africa, I know he's raising up people, so you can choose what you want to partner with or not, amen. After two days he will revive us. And on the third day, he will raise us up. Go to 2 Peter 3 verse 8. Some of the people that know the word know where I'm going with this. Those that don't know, we are living in 2022. Amen? Okay, just checking. <laughs> 2 Peter 3 verse 8. Also in the Amplified. Never, nevertheless, do not let this one fact escape you, beloved, that with the Lord... One day is a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day. So, what am I believing for? The word says, on the second day, he will revive us. What is, what, what is revival? It's to be revived. So revival is part of God's plan for this world. God has a plan with this nation. He has a plan with you in your seat right now. And that is to revive you. That's why we have these meetings over here. That's why we preach the word. That's why missions, all these things that you can be part of, it is for that specific reason. And that is revival. Whoever knows, you know, when you go on a mission trip, you expect to be a blessing, but you actually come back being blessed. Anyone that know? Come on. You get revived. I remember when Marcus and Claire were sharing the testament, the previous crusade of that dead baby. And I mean, I saw this guy do moves on the stage, jump. I mean... Three, four meters high. (laughs) He didn't look very tired. You weren't tired at all, right? Because of the fire, because of the presence, because of what you experienced. You were revived. That's why we love this church so much. Amen. (laughs) So a thousand years... Is like one day to the Lord. Amen? That's what the word says. So 
Sorry, did I say days? I said, I said a thousand years, right? Yeah. And if we're, le- if we're living in 2022 right now, right? Where are we right now? Are you catching it? Are you catching it? On the second day, he will revive us. It's not what I say, it's what the word says. And on the third day, he will raise us up. That he is getting his church ready right now. He is building his church. Hallelujah. He is filling his church with glory, with revelation. Jesus said that in the last days, people will do greater miracles than I. We are stepping into greater glory. Because Jesus is coming back for a victorious church. Can you say amen? Amen. Not some church that's crippled. That doesn't know the word. That doesn't know who they are. Amen. Amen. A church that knows who they are. That's on fire. That's who he's coming back for. Praise the Lord. On the second day, He will revive us. Doesn't this get you excited? (laughs) He is busy. He is working. As I said, there's no load shedding with Him. There's no off days, on duty, off, off duty days. He's busy moving. We got to catch it in the spirit, amen, and go. And that's what I believe is going to happen tonight. That's why I'm so excited about it. Because these meetings, everything, the Christian life is about action. You only realize what you have until you step out. Because it's easy, who knows what I'm talking about here. It's easy to say, I have the fruit of the Spirit until I'm with my mother in law. (laughs) It's easy to say, I'm full of the fruit. I have an amazing mother in law, don't worry. (laughs) It's easy to say, I have the fruit of the Spirit, but until I'm around people, How do you really know you have the fruit of the Spirit? Amen. Everything is about action. Everything is about going. Amen. Go into all the world. For God so loved that he gave. God demonstrated his love. Jesus demonstrated his love by hanging on a cross for us. There was demonstration. There was action. He proved his love for us by getting on a cross for us. Am I right? It's exactly the same thing in the Christian In the Christian walk. If people are only going to see offense. Bitterness. Gossip. And all these things. I'm going to say you know. And then they say to you. You know. Jesus loves you so much. But you know, this guy, he likes to talk, and you, and you talk about this person in front of him, and then you say, No, God is so good. But 
Does your life testify of his goodness? Does your life testify of his faithfulness? Because we sing the songs. There's wonder working power in his name. There's wonder working power in his blood. But do we really believe it? <laughs> Amen. Amen. You're all there. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Hallelujah. Luke 4, verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty them that are bruised. So you want to know why? Why we are filled with the Holy Ghost? Action! It's for those around you. Amen. It's for your family. It's for your friends. Is that when that power, when the power of God comes upon you, when the fire hits you, hallelujah, you can't keep it back. Anyone know what I'm talking about here? And I understand not everyone you know, can leave their jobs and just go to India and serve there as a missionary. Amen? Sometimes we, we make it sound like that. You know, you have to forsake everything. <laughs> leave everything at the altar and go to Haiti and stay there alone. <laughs> so I'm not speaking about that. Amen? Is that okay? <laughs> I once had I once had someone I actually once had a <laughs> I had a guy like that say something to me like that. He's like, but Dan, you know what what do you mean by that? And I, and I had to say, No, I apologize. I did not mean it in that way. So that's why I'm doing it right now, okay? <laughs> so you know my heart. Because <laughs> I had one guy that was involved in business and he had a big family and he's like, Well, do you think I must leave it tomorrow? <laughs> and just so I'm not speaking about that, okay? But it's to be a blessing around those, to be a blessing to those around you. Amen. To your families, your friends. And yes, if God tells you to go, you go. But where you are, you do what you can do where you are. But we got to keep moving. We got to keep letting God move through us. Because if we truly say that our lives are His, then surely we should, people should be able to see him in us. Amen. People should be able to see him when we, do, when we walk around, when we talk to people, the way we love people. He will revive us. Not me. He will. He will revive us. 
But when you let him to do the work, and I understand sometimes it can be maybe not that nice, but we surrender. We say yes. And whatever way it looks like, we just want him at the end of the day anyway, hey. So, I'm excited for what's coming to the body of Christ. I'm excited about what God is doing in South Africa. I'm excited about what God is doing in this church. It's good news. And if it's good news, you can then smile. You can have joy. Because it is good news. So let's be careful what we focus on in these days. Let's keep our faces before him and our eyes fixed on Jesus. And we're going to see great things come. I can tell you right now. God is up to something. He is reviving his church. <laughs> mm. Isaiah 44 verse 3 says, For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty, and floods upon the dry grounds. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed, and my blessing upon thine offspring. That's the Lord. <laughs> he will come and touch you if you are hungry. No matter how dry you, you can be dry, it's okay. He will flood you. Amen. <laughs> But everywhere we go, it doesn't matter whether we're in Africa, Asia, America. If there are hungry people, man, oh man. <laughs> it's exciting to see what God will do with a hungry heart who's thirsty. Amen. And more than ever, we need to be men and women that are hungry. And, you know, they're not just satisfied with because I know, and I, I've had the privilege to, to study theology and to have my degree in that, but I can't just be satisfied with that. You understand what I'm saying? I can't just be satisfied with just some doctrine. No, doctrine is important for the Christian life, but there needs to be, there needs to be, there needs to be presence, amen. There needs to be power. Because you can't get away from reading the Bible and realize that miracles are real. Sadly, today there's people that try to prove every little thing. I think it's called liberalism, liberalism theology, where they try to prove, you know, that, you know, when the, the you know, all the, the miracles when Moses, you know, when the water <laughs> split open, they try to prove all these weird things because. They don't believe in the power. But it's because they haven't seen the power. Amen. And we carry that same power inside of us. What are we doing with this power? I preached on it recently that miracles, that glory follows us. That when, 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 when righteousness goes before us, glory is our real God. Amen. It's what the Bible says, that when we allow the Lord to go before us, when we focus on the Lord, the Bible says that these signs will follow those that believe. Believe in Him, believe in His Word. When we allow that to happen, when we allow Him to shape us, to cleanse us, to refine us, man, we can see some great things.
we can get excited for some great things. So I'm excited for tonight. I don't know about you. We are going to see some great things. There's a few people up there tonight. Once again, I need to get my steps in. Amen. Pastor Merrick said it doesn't happen very often when people come up. (laughs) You can run, but you can't hide. (laughs) There I am. (laughs) Hallelujah. (laughs) Hello, sir. Now I can (laughs) now I can look down at the people. At the bottom here. (laughs) Praise the Lord. It's exciting days ahead. So for me, as I mentioned, because I get the question a lot about just, just life, you know, about what's going on. But we can't afford to let that steal our joy. Amen. (laughs) Am I right? What's your name, sir? Eric. Eric, good to meet you. There's a seat at the bottom for you. I said there's a seat at the bottom for you. You like it up here? I like it here. Okay, cool. Just checking. Wonderful. Just playing with you. Come on, say, tonight is my night night. to receive from the Lord, to receive His touch, His His blessing, blessing. His His mercy. mercy. Amen. Amen. Tonight's the night. The fourth and final night. Yesterday I asked the question, who wants to carry on? And only three people said, amen. So I said, we can start a home cell and we can extend the meetings. <laughs> you coming to look for me? I missed all of you down here. (laughs) But Matthew was sharing his testimony recently. Matthew, stand up. And come, come over here. Matthew was sharing his testimony recently. I didn't say Ben must stand up, but... Oh, he's the security guard. <laughs> I know his weakness, though. <laughs> Matthew was sharing his testimony recently about when the fire, t- the fire touched him, and it was about one year ago, pretty much. Yeah. And um, what are you feeling right now? It's Matthew's first time to America. So, what's your, what's your experience been in the meetings? <laughs> it's been amazing. Um, man, the Lord's just really sh- taking me back to the importance of seeking Him. I was speaking to Ben and saying, so many people seek, even seeking the fire, seeking the power, seeking joy, seeking love, seeking peace. And they try to find it in all these places. And they forget that it's found at the feet of Jesus, like Dan's been speaking about. 
So again, it's, the Lord's just taking me back to what it means to serve Him. And it's all about Him. You know, every page in that book has Jesus all over it. And um, even when you're getting stuck in that book, because Daniel's leaving, and he's not going to be preaching here every night. So when you're alone in that book, look for Jesus. That's when the Word comes alive. That's what Daniel's saying. The letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Don't look for the things of God. Look for God Himself. And, that's really just what the Lord's done this week for me again. Thank you. He's one of my closest friends. And uh, I have the privilege of working with him pretty much every day of my life. And um, I can bear witness that what he's saying even in his own life, I can see it in his own life. And for me, that's a powerful thing. You know, and I know even he has testament, testimonies even now of his family coming, getting touched by the presence and t touched through his life of just loving Christ. Amen. And, but everything becomes simple. And when we make it about him and we, because what the enemy tries to do is he tries to, he tries to throw a million questions in our mind about how this and that, how am I going to do this, how am I going to do that? And if we're not careful with that, if we don't take our thoughts captive, it can bring fear very easily. And that's what, that's what happens many times and with that, other things start to happen. You know what I'm talking about? Anxiety, all types of things. Because we don't control our thought life. And we don't get in the word and see what he says. Such as, on the second day he will revive us. <laughs> that he has a plan in the midst of what's going on. He has a plan. Mm, let's go to another verse actually. Haggai, six, Haggai 2, sorry. Verse 6. Also popular. For this says the Lord of hosts. One, once more. It is a little while. I will shake heaven and the earth. The sea and the dry land. And I will shake all nations. And they shall come to the desire of all nations. Who knows who the, the desire of all nations is? It's Jesus. And I will fill this temple with glory. Says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. And the glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place, I will give peace. So if it's anyone that should have peace in this world, it should be God's people. It should be us, amen. Because we know the end. Anyone read the final pages? Anyone knows who wins? His plan will always prevail. Amen. He will shake nations. Amen. Ask of me the nations, and I will give it to you as your inheritance. Your inheritance is nations. But we can only do that when we come together. Am I right? And when we run our race, and we don't worry what this minister is doing or this person is doing, amen? amen. We do what he tells us to do. Yes. We have faith yes. in his word and what he tells us to do, and we go. Yeah. And we run our race. But in order to run the race, we need power. We need strength. 
I don't know who right now is the fastest man on earth. I think, I only remember, is it Usain Bolt? Is he still, I don't know who it is now. Is he still the man? (laughs) But when you run a race, as you know, it's important how you take off. Am I right? Especially a hundred meter You don't have a plan in your head saying, you know, the first 18 18 meters, I'm going to go nice and slow. Then the last 20 meters, I'm going to really speed up. From the beginning, you want a nice, fast, you know, you want to be, you want to be ready. Amen. You want to be explosive. You want to get ready when that gun shoots. Yo, man, you're going to start running. Amen. And. That's what, that's, what the Holy, that's what the Holy Spirit does to us. That's what the fire of God, it launches you, it propels you. Amen. To run our race in life for the cause of Christ, for the harvest of souls that awakes us. All of us get to play a part in it. Bia was saying yesterday, I believe that sometimes because... You know, we see an evangelist or, you know, even amazing pastors like Pastor American Pastor Linda, we think it's just for them. And it's a very common thing and you, and you know, and you, you just settle with that. But God has called you. The Bible says that many are called, but few are chosen. And even right now, you know what? Let's play a game. Come stand up. I need more people. You guys can all come up. But because the Bible says many are called, few are chosen. And I want to say all of you in this room are called. You're all called. Amen. You're all called. But now, if I'm to be a sergeant right now and I'm going to go fight, okay? And I need soldiers to fight with me. And here's... Who said what? But... But I have to go... If I have an assignment right now to go do, and I need people to stand with me, to come with me, to fight, to help preach, to do all these things, and here's my list, and now I have to give it out, say, listen... You know, will you come fight with me or preach with me? Fight again, spiritual battles, amen. (laughs) And come with me, for example, to Zambia, let's say. And I give it out to all of you guys, all know about it. You're all called to come along. But let's say only Marcus, Marcus only answers yes. <laughs> so everyone else says no. Marcus says he puts his hand up. And he says, yes, I'll come with you. Thank you. <laughs> so then what, what do I say? Okay, well, I choose you. You can come with me. It's exactly the same thing in the Christian life. You guys may just sit down. Thank you. Thank you. I pray that you guys will also say yes and you will be chosen. Amen in front of you. <laughs> but it's exactly the same thing with the Lord. The Lord wants to use you in your realm right now. And he calls you to make a difference where you are. And once again, that's not all in India. In a little hut in Africa. But it's where you are. That God has given you specific giftings. When we start to realize that the church is a body. Oh, hallelujah. That it is a body. We all have different parts to play. But when we play that part, the body is in full function. <laughs> Amen. 
And then it becomes easy. Amen. I don't have to worry about this preacher and that preacher. I know he's doing his part. And you can bless that. You can partner with that. That's why Pastor Merrick is such an amazing pastor. Because he doesn't care about who comes around the hood. He just encourages. Everyone knows that. He just encourages and says, just go for it. Because he knows what he has to do. He knows he's playing his part and what God has called him to do. So he's not threatened with Pastor, with Pastor Willie in front here. Am I right? <laughs> we can talk in the green room. <laughs> I'm joking. We all have a different part to play in this world in reaching people. And there's nothing more beautiful when we lay down our lives. When we become a living sacrifice to the Lord. In our place where we find ourselves. So never feel like you're just second just secondary. You know, just like you're the you're the last pick. God has picked you. And you too can walk in the anointing. Amen. You too can see miracles, signs and wonders, deliverance. All these things that God has promised to his believers, amen, to his church. And he's paid for it already. So all we have to do is walk in it. And then it's easy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm getting sidetracked. Three and a half more hours. <laughs> Sorry, I meant five. <laughs> Two more days. <laughs> Two more days. <laughs> but guys, it is a free gift. And for those that were here, I spoke a bit on the Lord, you remember? Anyone that was here? And I was saying that you know, the devil has been defeated. Amen. We all know that. We preach it. We always preach the devil's under our foot. Hallelujah. We know that, so that's not the issue. But we need to, we need to get away from the law. Jesus fulfilled the law. Amen. And grace and truth comes through Jesus Christ, the Bible says. So the issue that we have many times today is condemnation. Am I right? Strife. All these things, offense, all these things are law-based things that we still struggle with. And only once we forget about that, we get that away. Amen. And realize that Christ has redeemed us for becoming a curse for us. For it is written, curse is every man that hangs on a tree. Galatians 3. That all the blessings of Abraham might come, come upon us. Because of faith in Christ. But so many times we want to strive. It's a, it's a law thing. You know what I'm talking about? So we struggle to receive from the Lord what he has for us. Because we can be so in our heads. 
Amen. Pastor Rodney Howard Brown said that our minds are for thinking and our hearts are for drinking. Where was Jesus crucified? Golgotha. What does that mean? Skull. Where did David, with a slingshot, kill Goliath? In the skull, in the head. You receive the mind of Christ. So we need to get out of here. Out of the head. Amen. Amen. And just receive. Isaiah 55 verse 1 says this. Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy grain and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Simply accept it as a gift from God. Just come. Come. Come to the waters and drink. John 7 verse 37. In the last days, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Come. Just come to him. Stop working it out. Everyone know, any, let's actually read it. Acts 8. Mm. Acts 8, let's start from verse 5. Philip the evangelist went down to the city of Samaria, Samaria and began proclaiming Christ the Messiah, the anointed to them. I'm reading from the Amplified. The crowd gathered and were paying close attention to everything Philip said as they heard the message and saw the mir miraculous signs which he was doing validating his message. For unclean spirits, demons shouting loudly, were coming out of many who were possessed and many who had been paralyzed and lame were healed. So there was great rejoicing in that city. Now there was a man named Simon who previously practiced magic in the city and amazed the people of Samaria claiming to be something great. They all paid a great deal of attention to him from the least to the saying, this man is what is called the great power of God. They were all paying attention to him because for a long time he had mystified and dazzled them with his magic. But when... They believed Philip as he preached the good news about the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ. They were being baptized, both men and women. Even Simon <laughs> believed Philip's message of salvation. And after being baptized, he continued on with Philip as he watched the attesting signs and great miracles taking place, he was con con constantly amazed. When the apostles, listen here, when the apostles in Jerusalem heard the people of Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. They came down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For he had not yet fallen on any of them, 
They had simply been baptized in the name of the Lord as his possession. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them one by one, and they received the Holy Spirit. Now, listen here. Now, now when Simon saw that the Spirit was given through the laying on of hands, he offered them money. Saying, give me this authority and power too, so that anyone on whom I lay my hands on may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, may your money be destroyed along with you, because you thought you could buy the free gift of God with money. You see, you can't buy the anointing with, what, with money, with, with, with striving. You can try, but I can tell you, you will leave disappointed. You will just tire yourself out with lots of sweat and tears. And you will find yourself in condemnation probably. But come to the waters and drink from him. It's a free gift. Whether you have money or no money, come and delight yourself in the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you imagine Simon, a magician? The Bible says there that when Simon saw that the Spirit was giving, given, by the laying on of hands, that he was caught by that. A magician that was, that was known for witchcraft, known for, you know, all that terrible demonic things. That the Bible says he was caught up by it. I don't know what you think, but for a magician to be caught up by it, there must have been some crazy manifestations. There must have been some crazy demonstration for a magician to be caught up from the laying on of hands. Am I right? And today we're scared of falling, laughing, joy, crying. But not this church. To see your pastor last night. <laughs> and Pastor Willie. Yeah. He was out. In spiritual terms. <laughs> we need to just come. Yeah. <laughs> and let him do a work in us. Yeah. Let's stop the striving. Just drink. Just open your heart. It's that simple. You don't have to shout until you blew in the face. You can just open your heart. And receive from the Lord. If shouting is the way you relax, that's okay. <laughs> Amen. It's been purchased for you already. As I said, that's why witch doctors don't like us. 
because they tell people you have to do this and that, A, B, and C. Then you have to give me, you know, $50, and then I'll pray for you for a person. And But we preach that Christ has paid it all. You don't... We don't need your money. Christ doesn't need your money. Jesus didn't say, you know, I'll be on the if you know, I will stay on I'll stay on the cross for the third day if you give me another three thousand dollars. <laughs> he didn't do that. Amen. He doesn't say, you know, if you Look how Jesus handled the woman caught in the act of adultery. The Pharisee said to Jesus, according to the law of Moses, she should be stoned to death. According to the law. But hallelujah, grace and truth through Jesus Christ. He's fulfilled the law. <laughs> now when we put our faith in Christ, we are right, We are righteous. We are justified, and those he justified, he also glorified. So what's after justification? Glory! Glory! Because now the light of the world has come to live inside of you. So shine! Arise! You are a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. In the last days, Isaiah 2 verse 2, the mountain of the Lord shall be established as the highest of all mountains. What's so funny? You want to share the joke with everyone else. So then everyone else can understand why you're laughing. The stomach. Some of us bigger guys are also saying, Lord, work on our stomachs. Let's have stomachs like Justin.
Good to see you. Good to see you too. Good to see you too. I never knew you worked at Starbucks. Today my coffee was blessed. Thank you. Let's get to a place with the Lord where we say, Lord, just come. Say, Lord, I come to you. And we stop trying to work it out. Just let him do the work. He is God, you know. He kind of knows what's going on. In your life. He kind of knows every thought that you think. So I think he does have the answer for your life. Amen. So if we want to get anywhere in the Christian life, it starts with rest. If you want to be powerful in the spirit, it starts with rest. Knowing who has your life, knowing what you believe, Believing in what the scriptures say. Am I right? And everything else follows after that, amen? But Christ is our cornerstone. And we're not, we're not called to build our, hand, our, our house on sand. Amen? Where when the next storm, the next wave comes, blows it over. Because our foundations aren't set on Christ. On what he did for us once and for all. Amen. It's built on him. So you can actually be relaxed everywhere you go. I'm not joking. No one's paying me to say this. <laughs> you can actually smile through life. And enjoy life, enjoy people. Am I right? Amen. Yeah? <laughs> and then you realize, I know the word says you're commanded to love people, but you actually realize it's a joy to love people. Yeah. Because <laughs> the Bible says that you were the joy set before Him. So when you capture His heart, when you realize, when you fall in love with Him and His ways, how you treat people will be a complete new level. A new level of love. Amen. Amen. <laughs> ah. He is good. My God is good. He is so good. And he welcomes us with open arms. And when we deserve a slap, he gives us a kiss. Am I right? 
Song of, Song of Songs, verse 1. Chapter 1, verse 1 says, Let him smother me with kisses. Let him kiss me. That's what the Bible says. Amen. Anyone knows who I'm talking about? When you have a child learning to walk, and now you know he takes one or two steps, and now he falls down, you don't go say, bad child, and you give him a hiding. <laughs> Am I right? And say, you know, you should have tried harder. <laughs> You'll get locked up if you do that. But we're God's children. Are we God's children? Yes. <laughs> so let's stop with condemnation. Jesus said to that, that woman caught in the act of adultery, does anyone condemn you? No, Jesus. No. Go and sin no more. Amen. So we need to get to a new, whole new level in love. For Christ and his people. John the beloved. John the disciple whom Jesus loved the Bible says. John the apostle of love was called. Everyone know who I'm talking about? Not, not that John. <laughs> but he is also, he's also a loving guy. But in the Bible... In the book of John, you see when Jesus was coming out of the tomb. And when they heard the news, Peter was there with John. And Peter was, you know, just a few verses before he denied Jesus. And he said he would never deny Jesus. Everyone know the story. And he denies Jesus there. And now the Bible says that when, when they heard the news that Jesus wasn't in the tomb, they ran to go see. And the Bible actually says there that the other disciple whom Jesus loved outran Peter. You see, lovers will always make history. Lovers will pull people out of wheelchairs. Lovers will go the extra mile. Not doubters. Am I right? Lovers, lovers of God. And you know, in Christianity, and I say this everywhere, it's the only religion where you can fall in love with God. Everything else is just rules, regulations. But in Christianity, you fall in love with Him because He is love. Am I right? When we deserve death, he gave us life. When we believe in him, you don't perish. <laughs> Am I right? <clears throat> it's wonderful news. Can I have some water? <clears throat> Sorry, it's such wonderful news. My voice is gone. <clears throat> ah, wonderful. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life, eternal life, abundant life. And it's not something that we experience. Yes, we go to heaven, am I right? We don't believe in Many people try to get people to believe in inclusion doctrine and all these things. You know, that, you know, it doesn't matter what you believe, everyone goes to heaven. It's not what we believe, amen. 
So we know when we believe in Jesus Christ, when we are washed in the blood, we know where we're going. We know we are re reconciled back to God. But that doesn't start in a hundred years from now. That starts right now. Amen. That's why healings, deliverance, blessing, all these things can happen right now. But it's all done through the power of the Holy Spirit. We need Him. We need the power of God more than ever. Even myself, I'm not satisfied. I need more. And the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Hallelujah. You're meant to experience and see the goodness of God. You're meant to see and experience the glory of God. So there's more. Amen. We got to go deeper. Until I can't hold my breath anymore. Until I stop swimming. Until I just let, let the river take me. Am I right? Becomes easy then. <laughs> so, you've learned a bit about me. <laughs> My wife, both of us, we are, we're very easy people. We've made a decision to love Jesus with everything. And out of loving him, you obey his commandments. So out of loving him, you obey his voice. So for us, it's easy to go. It's easy, it's easy for us to do life. Our marriage is blessed. Because we put him first. Our relationships are amazing with people. Because we put him first. And we're not afraid of seeing what the Lord wants to do. We usually are the first people on the floor in church meetings. <laughs> so we're very simple people. Amen. With a very big God. We love Him so much. And it's just the beginning. So it's exciting. And we all have our own journeys to play. It's the time. It's still early. <laughs> but we as God's people need to, need to rise up. We need to take the word. This world would be changed if we truly walked what we believe. Am I right? We have a God, so we had a, we have a God who answers by fire. Amen. And he hears the prayer, he hears the prayers of the righteous. Do I have any righteous people here? So it's not just me. It's not just you, Ben. It's not just you, Andre. Thank God. God has an army of men and women. So we need to run with the fire. You need to serve in the local church. Like us, you guys have the greatest privilege. I mean... You don't even realize what you have over here. That's how special it is. To have, a, to have pastors that love you, that actually love you. But it isn't just a command from it's a joy to, to love you guys. You have missions.
Serve where you can, amen. amen. And do it to the best of abilities. And you'll see the Lord's hand come on you mightily. Because many times we think, you know, we, we have a, a type of, and it's, it's not the Lord, but as soon as we, we get to a place, you know, pride is such a dangerous thing. Because as soon as I think I'm the, the, high, the high man with the anointing and, you know, it's my anointing and, you know, all of this stuff, it's, it's a dangerous place to be in. And yeah, now all the, you know, the, the smoke, all the, 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 the glory cloud that's here. It's not because, it, it's, not, it's not because of the smoke machine in the back there. But it's because of me. People think like that. And yes, we are all part of the body, and I guess some people are the, the butt, we understand that, but But Jesus said, bring the children to me. Bring the children to me. Can I tell you what's one of our secrets of why we have the size of our crusades we have? It's because we specifically pay close attention to the children. Anyone, that, anyone that's come with on our crusades would see how many thousands of children, hundreds of children there are at the crusades. We want them there. So even in the natural, it plays such a significant thing. So um, we pay cl close attention to that. But we have to become children again. Yeah. And allow our Father to discipline us. To love us. Amen. Amen. You give a child a piece of paper. And you ask, you ask the child, what is he thankful for? He will start, he will start writing on there, I'm thankful for my bed. I'm thank you, thankful for my parents. I'm thankful for clothes. I'm thankful for my school, for water, for food, for life. You give an older man a paper to say, well, I'm thankful for beer. I don't know. You hearing what I'm saying? So we need to remain in a place of thankfulness and gratitude to the Lord. But we pray for you daily. Please know that. The whole World Harvest Church, if you're a member in the church, if you're not a member, you become a member. <laughs> then you can also receive our prayer request, our prayers. <laughs> <laughs> but now apparently we're members. Cool. So we're family. Amen. God has a big family. Man, his presence is good. Amen. From glory to glory. Amen. There's no downhill in Christ. Amen. Amen. Just new heights. Amen. You are seated in heavenly places. Amen. You are a citizen. You are a co-heir with Christ. Hallelujah. How does that make you feel? Great, hey? Ah, wow. Let's 
lift your hands to the Lord, everyone. Father, I thank you for tonight, Lord. I thank you for every person here, Lord, and for what you've started in their lives, Lord. For your grace, for your mercy, Lord, for your love. That, Lord, we can love you because you first loved us, Lord. And, Lord, today we say yes. That we don't just want to remain called, but we want to be chosen. And, Lord, we yield to you, Lord. And, Lord, we come as we are. So, Lord, we can get worked on. That your presence, that your fire can come burn inside of us so we can go as you are into the world, Lord. Into the families, into the communities, Lord. Into our workplaces, Lord. Thank you for your anointing, Lord. That teaches us all things, Lord. That, Father, even any bit of depression tonight, Lord, I thank you right now that it goes right now. That every question right now is silenced, Lord. Lord, there's no fear in love. Perfect love casts out all fear, Lord. And you are the perfect lover. You are the lover of our souls, Lord. So I thank you even now, Lord, that fear gets out of your people, Lord. Thank you, Lord, on the second day, you will revive us. And Father, I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing, even in this world we live in right now, Lord. That, Lord, revival is coming, Lord. That the whole earth will experience revival. Even from this meeting, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for people here that will go, that will be willing to obey your voice, to obey your word, Lord. yield to him right now let him touch your heart let him touch your body if you have pain in your body right now all the pain goes if you've specifically been struggling with migraines right now every migraine goes in Jesus name That's his presence, that's his power.
manta la bato. Eti la manti la manta la mano. Eti la manta la mano. E la bata la na moto la bo. Shiti ti la manta la moto. Eti la manto la manta la mo. Titi la manto la manto la mo. Titi la manto. Shiti la manto con la bata la moto la bo. Inti la manto la banto con to la bashi di di la mo. E la bato la moto la basha ta la ma. Tite la manto la manto la bato la bo. Inti la manto con to la bato la bo. Tonight, there's an invitation to go deeper. And the invitation has your name on it. Tonight, He calls you to go deeper with Him into new heights. Into a new place of surrender, of obedience, of trust. New place of faith. He calls you tonight to come into. He invites you. He's prepared the table. And he says, Come. Come to the waters and drink. anyone is thirsty let him come to me and drink just come and I'll do the rest come and I'll fill you to give the invitation tonight that if you're sitting here and you don't know Jesus and you maybe don't know Jesus maybe you know him in a religious way but you don't know him in a relationship in a way that he is love that he loves you that he died for you that he has a plan for you and that he paid the price once and for all so that you could be saved that you could be healed, restored, delivered and you know no longer can we afford to put our faith in just our mere parents but we have to know without a shadow of doubt 
that we are saved, that we know Him. And it's not just about going to church. Yes, we go to church. But we have to know that we are righteous, that we are in right standing with Him. So maybe that's you and you don't know that tonight. Maybe you're watching, I don't know. And you're saying, Daniel, I need to know. I need to know without a shadow of a doubt that I'm saved. I need to call on His name. I need to be washed in the blood. If that's you, can I please see your hand? I would love to pray for you. If you're here. Going once. Going twice. If that's you, just wave your hand up so I can see it. Wow. Praise the Lord. That means you're all saved. <laughs> that means all of you here are children of God. It's a good thing, amen. It's a good thing when you know you're a child of God. That you are righteous. That you are holy because of Him. So it's not a bad thing. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Tonight, before we close, we want to lay hands on everybody that wants to have hands laid upon them. And I know there's a, there's a setup. We're going to be doing it in. But once again, just open up your heart. Amen. And just receive from the Lord. Because He loves to touch His children. Hallelujah. Okay. Praise the Lord. Before we begin, put the stairs back. Put the stairs back. Thank you. Before we begin, let me just say something about this man of God. It's in his simplicity and his yieldedness that I watched him operate for tens of thousands. And I keep learning from him because it's it's not on how smart we are. It's not on how quick we are. It's on how yielded we are. And I just respect his message and his life. He just is just as genuine. And the fact that he is at 22 and have 300,000 people show up in a crusade, that just doesn't happen. Does that make sense? This just doesn't happen. And so I respect him so much. And I respect the team that he has. And I just respect what he's doing for God. I respect his wife, Bia. So you feel the presence of God here. God's going to touch you. But I want to receive an offering before we pray for people. Because people will be laid out. By the time we get done, I'll have to say, you three people that are left. I each. <laughs> so we want to receive an offering now. And I want to just say this as we do. Before we take your check out or take your phone. We are sowing for Zambia. Is that right? We're sowing for Zambia. 
We're sowing for that nation to come to Christ. And if you watched, I think it was last night, you had the bishop share. And um, it's just amazing. It's amazing. So we're going to go to God. And then we're going to, this is just as anointed as you're getting your hands, giving hands laid on. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Daniel, Evangelist Daniel. Thank you. Let's go before the Lord. Father, we thank you today. These are the last days. Thank you, Lord. You're raising up men and women all over the earth to carry the message. Each one of us are called, Lord. But everyone has a different place in the body. But without a doubt, Father, we believe. We believe that you've given Daniel the toy a special assignment. And so, Lord, we link our faith with his. And we believe, God, that as you speak to us regarding our part to sow for the kingdom of God, for the part for this harvest to come in, we believe, Lord, you're going to talk to our hearts. And we believe, Lord, that we're going to, up, we're going to get out, go out of this meeting with a new anointing, a new dynamic in our walk with God, a, a, a deeper flow that we too will flow in the supernatural and miraculous wherever we go around the world in Jesus' name. Everybody believes that, said amen. So we're going to take a time. You, you may bring your offering up here or you may use your phone. You're going to do a worship. That sounds like a real good idea. Praise the Lord. You give life. You are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. Get to your the Lord. Father, we release our faith for the offerings given tonight. We believe it's sowed in good ground and will multiply literally thousands of souls will come to Christ in Zambia. We believe it. Release our faith for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, come on, come on down. I'll bless that basket. And for the balcony crowd, those closer to heaven, we release our faith for them as well. 
multiply the seeds sown in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Brenda. All right. Um, did you want to bring direction, Pastor Willie? Amen. Here's what we're going to do. If you're in the balcony, I need you to make your way down the stairs. And you're going to come around this back wall over here if you want to get prayed for. And we're going to do this section first. We're going to go section one, two, three, four. You're going to get up. You're going to go around the back wall. Okay? And come down and come through. Amen? If you're in the balcony and you want prayer, you need to come down now. And you're going to go around this way here. And after you get prayed for, you're just going to go right back to your seat, or you can be dismissed in Jesus' name. You give life.